And we're live. Perfect. So good evening, everybody. Welcome to Adelon Unplugged number 14. So today we've got an interesting uh, journey for you. I've done a little bit of pre-cutting. I'll explain to you why. Um, I have a beautiful model here, a great hair texture, quite a strong hair texture. Um, the one thing I, I have to be mindful of and the one thing that I have to communicate to you guys is that her friend's been cutting her hair with um, paper scissors. So the problem we've got is that there's lots and lots of random little lengths uh, in random places. So I've changed my technique a little bit and I'm going to talk you through what I'm doing and why I'm doing it. So rather than cutting my haircut, in other words, rather than cutting lots of clean lines, um, I'm going to work with more of a chipping technique. And the reason for that is because when you club cut a shape, the hair sits really perfectly. The problem with that is because you've got lots of, you're gonna notice when I'm cutting it, because there's lots of little short bits in there, when you comb the mechanical shape down, you'll have holes in the shape where the hair is missing. So if you cut the whole thing with more of a kind of chipping technique, and I'm gonna go through what chipping technique is in a minute, you're gonna find that the shape will sit much better. So let me explain to you what I've done so far, okay? I'm basically going to work with the side parting. So if you look in the mirror, um, Harry Moore. So I'm going to start with the side parting. Now the hair has been bleached and toned. Uh, beautiful colour here by Evie. Now the issue we have is that the hair is already quite porous in texture. So I need to make sure that when I'm working on the hair, I've got a really, really good clean grooming and keeping the hair as damp as I can. So I started my haircut with a side parting on the side, on the left hand side going through to the crown and then from the crown I went down to the nape okay now you can see this little short panel here this is what I've got in different areas and much shorter can you see and they're randomly placed in different areas within the haircut already so what I need to do is I need to basically work as clean as I can but with quite uh, textured cutting lines okay okay do me a favor would you mind turning the music off for me please Right, so what I've done, I've cut this, this is zone one, and I'll explain to you how I've cut it. I've started by taking vertical sections, and my cutting line has basically been chipping, so I've been cutting it, still mechanically, but I've been cutting it in like little triangles. So what happens is when it falls down, it falls slightly more textured, not so clean cut, because the reality is I've got, you can see I've got shorter areas where the hair has been pointed by itself the previous haircut so I need to basically take the shape down rebalance it as clean as I can but at the same time work with this kind of more aggressive um, approach to cutting so I've cut zone one vertical section chipping working on the base to behind the ear then what I've done is I've come behind the ear and I've cut the external shape round and then naturally following the contour of the line which if you look in the mirror it looks like quite a beautiful little shape. I quite like that. And even though I've cut it with the chipping technique, it still looks very mechanical. Okay? So now I'm going to move on to my next zone. And it's going to be basically, from this point here, I'm going to work all the way across to the top of the ear. So I'm going to keep as much length as I can to sit on top of the shape after. So I take a section that goes from that center point here to the top of the ear. Now you can see, on this side, you see when I lift it up, it's not as short, so I could probably afford to keep a bit more weight on this side if I really wanted to. But the key here is to really, really, really groom the excess hair. Get all this super, super clean, get it really, really neat, okay? Can you see these little short bits that keep falling out? They're basically areas where the hair's been uh, chopped into. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use a little bit of the oil milk. That will give me a bit more control. Okay, and now I'm going to use a little bit of D-Day and that will help me slide and glide my scissors through the hair and glide my comb through the hair much easier. Can you see? Instantly, I get much more of a smoother groove. And if you actually get close, you can probably hear as I comb the hair. If you come really close to it, Harry, just listen to the sound. I don't know if you can hear that. But that's basically the cuticles that are standing up quite quite um, predominant. Even though we've used conditioners and we've even put a bit of a treatment on the hair, because the hair is so brittle, 
um, we have to basically really work clean and really try and douse the hair with a, a cutting lotion to help me, can you see, glide through the hair a bit easier, okay? Okay, so this is gonna be my second zone. And I'm trying to make the hair stick as much as I can to themselves. And I'll do that. I'm gonna wet it down a bit more so it's easy for me to groom. Do one more time. I need to try and get it as clean as possible. Good. Can I borrow someone's hands? Thanks, Kay. Thanks, Mr. Gunnar. I just need you to hold that hair there for me, please, behind me here. Thank you very much. Okay, good. So, now, I'm gonna come from here. I wanna keep some weight through here. So, what I'm gonna do before I cut it, I'm gonna to start to put my external shape in first a little bit. So, can you see the bend in the hair? I'm going to come from this point and I'm going to cut it. You can only really do this if you've got sharp scissors, otherwise you're going to find it's going to constantly push the hair in one direction. Whereas if you've got sharp scissors, you can put it in quite easily. I want to try and maintain some length on this side, so I'm going to come back around that side. Thank you, just a moment. One second. There you go. Sebastian from Poland says hello. Hi Sebastian, welcome. For those of you who are joining in, uh, please, 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 please feel free to ask questions because I've had an amazing week uh, last week and I met, I was lucky enough to meet a lot of brand new people that I've never met before. And one of the feedback that they were giving me was that you know, they're really enjoying these live um, Alon Unplugged events but they're always a bit shy to ask questions because they don't want to feel silly. My advice to you please is, and this was the same feedback I got of so many people, just please feel free to ask questions. Don't be embarrassed, it's really important. So now I'm coming through with vertical sections, okay? I'm combing the hair out from the base and I'm using a chipping technique, working from the bottom and working up like this. So I'm cutting little small triangles and that way what's happening is the shape is falling slightly more textured and it's going to blend in a bit better with all the little random short bits. So again, every time, I'm still working mechanically clean, I'm just trying to manage the texture. Can you see how the hair likes to grip? Really keep that grooming, it's really important guys. Really, really, really important. As soon as you start being lazy with that, that's when you'll start having loads of problems. So comb the hair out from the base and use a chipping technique. Now as I get round here, I want to maintain a little bit of weight on the external shape. So what I'm going to do is I'm basically going to start to use a little bit of over direction on the shape to maintain a little bit of extra weight. Before I carry on and cut the whole of this zone, I've cut two sections now, so I'm just gonna go through horizontally and just check my shape. Now I'm looking for a balanced shape. I'm not looking for clean lines because I'm obviously cutting it using a chipping technique. So what I'm looking for is not a clean line, I'm looking for a balanced shape. So I'm checking my other direction basically, okay? So Josh LaMonica. Hey Josh, how you doing mate? He has asked what would be the difference between cutting it like this and cutting it, club cutting it. So what would happen, how would the hair react if you were to club cut it? Good, good question. So going back to what we were saying before, as people join in, I might have to repeat this a few times, which is good. Um, the previous haircut that we've had was cut by basically a friend of ours using um, paper scissors. One of her friends decided to cut her hair for her. Um, so there's basically lots and lots and lots and lots of random short bits running through the haircut. Not so much on this side, but you'll see a lot more uh, on the other side and also through the top. You'll see it a lot more. So basically the problem with that Josh is that when you club cut a shape and you're working with it super super clean, the danger of that is that when the hair sits down and the light hits the hair, the problem you've got 
is that there's areas which are missing. There's little kind of holes within the shape. So when the light hits it, it ends up becoming like little broken holes in it, you can see it. Whereas if you chip the line in, you're basically disguising all the little holes that were randomly cut in previously. So in effect, by using a chipping technique, I'm disguising any holes or any problems that the shape might have from a previous haircut. So I'm working on the base at the moment. So my number system is one to two, two to three, three to four, and so forth. And every time I'm combing the hair down, remember I've checked it to make sure my balance is correct. As I'm coming round to this area here, I'm gonna to start to over direct. So again, work this super clean. Can you see these little random short bits where they keep poking out? It's where basically uh, we've had it randomly cut. So if you let go, I've got something on I'm gonna come down and I'll try and get this as clean as I possibly can. Okay, I'm gonna, to, to make it easier for myself, I'm gonna work inch by inch. So I'm not gonna worry about that hair there now. I'm just gonna worry about this hair here up to this point, And then I'm gonna worry about all this stuff because the reality is it's gonna keep jumping on me. So I'm not worried about this. You can see all the little short panels running through the shape. So Neil McBurney. Hi Neil. Has asked, I've been using Tornado now, which I'm guessing is scissors, okay. for 10 years. I think they're great, but what brand do you think is best for really sharp looks? It's a very good question. Um, okay, so obviously, we create our own brand of scissors. Um, the scissors that we use are Alalong branded scissors, um, hence the, these ones, okay? They're basically um, our own brand. We've, it's taken me about three years, three and a half years to get to where we are now. Uh, we finally, we're finally happy with them. we basically, they weigh four grams, 40, 40 grams, sorry, as, a, as, a, as an actual scissor. Um, they're really really tight on the tip so you can see the ends you can see how pointy they are so we can work on small detailed work uh, the way we tend to cut hair as a as a company is very very we try to aim on precision and the tighter the blade at the tip the more easier it is to um, to work on the detail work so we basically use them um, and all of our team use them and they're manufactured in Japan so they're custom made for us specifically. They're made by the same company that produces the Wings blade, which is one of my favorite blades. Um, so the manufacturer is the same company, uh, but the actual design itself has been custom made specifically by us. Uh, it's been an interesting journey. I've learned a lot about scissors and I've learned a lot about uh, the things that go wrong with scissors and how, why scissors cut properly, why they don't, why they bend, why they don't. There's a lot of random information that I've, I've learned about the types of metals that they use. They're handmade, uh, they're handmade scissors, so each one is um, crafted. They're not, see now guys, I'm gonna pull two, I'm gonna come to this point here, so I'm just gonna pull all those two or three sections to that same point. Because there isn't a lot of hair, I'm not worried about it too much. Um, so yeah, basically, they're 5.25 in length, they weigh 40 grams, and they're designed specifically for us for the way we cut hair. So those are the scissors we use. The reality is, everybody has their own preference. Um, I've always been a massive fan of wings. So when we were gonna design our own scissors, uh, they were obviously the number one company that I wanted to turn to, to help them to design. And we worked really closely with them, and it's been an interesting journey. So I'm using the Love Smooth, oh, I'm throwing the Love Smooth, you know what I want it? I'm using Love Smooth, which is basically a cream which allows me to basically smooth the hair out. Head down for me, darling. Thank you very much. So, I'm not scared to apply the product. The hair needs it, it's dehydrated. So you apply it, work it into the hair, and this will help me get a much smoother finish on the hair texture. I'm gonna dry this hair, check this hair, then I'm gonna to start to work on all the rest of the hair on the top. Now, Thank you. I'm gonna use a nozzle, okay? And I'm gonna aim, I'm not gonna use a brush. And the reason why I'm not gonna use a brush is because I wanna avoid all the root lift, okay? So, reasonable heat, not really, really hot. 
and just keep it moving. That way you don't burn. And I let the product help me manage the texture. So if you're interested in buying scissors, feel free to uh, email us at info at alilongeducation.com or you can visit the website and check the blades out for yourself. But basically they're the blades that all of our team use. And for those of you out there who actually own a pair, um, please feel free to comment on your experience with the blades. James yeah. Mould says hi. Hey James, how you doing mate? Welcome. I hope South Africa was good. The work looked great, well done. So you can see the Love Smooth is allowing the hair to sit and get a nice shine out of it. I'm not worried about all these short bits yet. I can't fix them till the end. Good. Now that the hair is dry, I can start to apply with a comb to separate the texture. Good. So, yeah, last week uh, I had the pleasure of meeting lots of people. In fact, we went to an event, a brilliant event, uh, put on by Tribute Magazine, and there was lots of friends there who were basically on stage doing hair. And one of the things that I was very lucky enough to, to see beforehand is I was lucky enough to meet a lot of people outside in the street who were basically um, very positive about what we're doing and what we're trying to do with these Alamon Unplugged. And one of the things that they mentioned to me was that they, them and their teams, they tend to watch the Unplugged, but they're always a bit nervous about asking questions. So I really want to encourage you guys to ask as many questions as you want. Please feel free, do not feel like I'm here for you. So at the end of the day, ask me whatever you want and I'll do my best to make sure I give you what, I, what you need. Um, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to actually change the outline a little bit. I've decided to play with it a little bit more. I'm going to make it a bit more creative. Um, so I'm going to use uh, the clipper to get a really sharp, sharp line. Okay. But before I do that, I'm going to carve the shape of my scissors. So the key to doing this is keeping your blade parallel. If your blade drops down or drops up, you'll graduate the line or graduate the hair underneath. So what you do is you maneuver the blade and then I'm going to curve it round. You can hear how dense that hair is by the way the blades are running through the hair. Yeah? And if you keep the blades parallel, you can get a really, really nice line in the shape. And then here, this point isn't obvious, isn't obvious enough. So I've got, to, I've got to basically shift it across a little bit to make it more obvious, because at the moment, it's not obvious enough. Good. So I'm using, again, I'm using the chipping technique to create a solid line. Okay. And just for the interest of time, I'm going to work it with the clipper to remove my neck hair. What I'm also going to do is I'm going to show you different ways of doing it. So obviously you can remove it with the neck hair, so you go against the grain. So if the hair is going down, you go up it. Okay, but at the same time, to so come on this side, Harry. With here, feel free to kind of draw, draw the line in with the clipper. And as soon as you put a solid outline in, even though the inside was cut using a chipping technique with lots of texture, as soon as you put a strong outline in, instantly what happens is the shape becomes more graphic. So Sasho is asking, is it possible to try the scissors before buying? Uh, no, no, but if you, if you try them and you're unhappy in any way, shape or form, as long as you send them, uh, communicate with us within 30 days, we can gladly, gladly um, either replace them or um, give you your money back. It's not a problem. At the end of the day, uh, scissors are very personal things. Obviously we use them, 
Um, and we love them, so it's not a question of, it's not really, I could sit here and tell you that, you know, they're great and all this kind of stuff, but at the end of the day, uh, scissors are very, very personal. I know what I like, I know what I don't like. Uh, the way we tend to work with hair, we tend to be very precise. So you need to have a scissor, which is small. You know, your scissor shouldn't be any bigger than your hand. You know, if it's bigger than that, it's like, what for? You can't even manage it properly. So the blades need to be tight and need to be thin so you can work on the detail and really get the blade. Um, this is what we use. Uh, so if you want to create work like ours, um, there's a certain tool that you need to use in order to help you achieve that alongside your, your mechanical shape and your technical approach. Like anything, the tighter the blade, the more detail work you can do. Good. So, basic shape in. Spin it round. Thank you, Lisa. Use your mirror. Look at the shape. Make sure you're happy with the shape. Make sure you're happy with the line. Okay, so now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start to work on all this length here, okay? So again, I'm gonna use the Day Day as my cutting lotion. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna work lots of different types of layering to create a soft, free, flowing shape because one thing we didn't want is we didn't want any sharp lines, okay? Good, there you go. Okay, good. So, I'm going to use the day day again. So I'm going to use Dede, okay? I'm going to use a little bit more oil milk. This is a really good conditioning product. And then I'm going to use the Love Smooth. And again, don't be scared to, to use quite a bit, because it needs it. The hair needs that kind of moisture. Sorry. Johnny, apparently my finger was over the mic, oh. <laughs> so I couldn't hear that. So if you were my repeating okay. what you just said about that. So basically I'm using oil milk, DD mist, and Love Smooth to help condition the hair. So when I'm drying the hair, I can get a really nice shine and get a nice build up of product. The problem that you've got is that when hair is quite dehydrated, um, if you don't use the right products, you can't get that kind of refined shine look, okay? Um, before I carry on talking about the blow dry, I want to introduce you to some, introduce you to some people. Um, behind, over here, if you zoom around, Harry, there is a group of people who are here from all around the world who are doing teacher training with myself to become Alaron educators. Uh, we have guys, who want to introduce yourselves? Yeah, who wants to start? I'm Jamie from Chicago. I'm Elisa from Toronto. I'm Michelle from Toronto. I'm Michelle from Mississauga. And what we're doing is we're basically doing uh, six months of teacher training. And the guys are going to be tested to, uh, to an interesting level, which is going to be fun. And we've been doing um, lots of different things there. We've been doing a teaching one to one, we've been teaching each other, the guys have been teaching each other. Um, and tonight what they're going to do is they're going to be drawing this haircut for me. So the idea behind that is that they're able to document the work properly. Okay, while I'm doing, while I start to blow dry, let me quickly tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to wrap dry the hair. I'm going to use a denim brush, okay, uh, to give me a bit of tension on the hair. And I'm going to wrap dry, let me talk you through wrap drying before I pass it on. So, I want you to imagine that there's a clock on the head, okay? This is 12 o'clock, this is 6 o'clock, that's 3 o'clock, 
that's nine o'clock. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to wrap my hair round from 12 to 3, from 3 to 6, from 6 to 12, all the way around. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to go from 12 to 6 to 9, 9 to 6. So I'm wrapping the hair in a circular motion with the hair dryer facing down the hair. Okay? And I'm not scared to put tension on the hair. The product will help me glide the comb through the hair. I have to be a bit gentle because obviously the scalp has had bleach on it. But ideally what I want is for the hair to be stretched and circulate around the shape of the head. Now one big problem people have when they wrap dry is they do this. Like that. That's no good because what's happening is you're making the ends of the hair bend in, bend out, sorry. So what you want to try to do is just don't take the brush off the scalp. Leave the brush on the scalp and follow with, with, the, with, with the hair dryer like this. And what will happen is the hair will end up hugging the head really beautifully. So Ronald from South Africa has Hello. asked how do you know when you have applied enough products on the hair and not too much? Brilliant question. What a brilliant question. Who was that? Ronel. 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 Good question, Van Ronel. Van Vollenhoven. Okay. So, Ronel, um, basically, what you're going to find with products... Can everyone hear me okay? If you can't, please let Harriet know and I'll try and talk a bit louder for you. Um, with products, a lot of it is to do with experience. So sometimes you'll use it and you'll use too much. Sometimes you'll combine and there'll be the wrong combination. Sometimes you won't use enough product. So realistically what you're going to find is that the more and more you use a specific range, the more experience you'll have with that range and the more you'll be able to adapt. Ideally, what I find is with hair that's dehydrated, it's more about the choice of product that you use rather than the amount you use. So in my scenario, I know the hair is quite dehydrated. So I need to use very moisture driven products to help me condition the hair. So everything I've used is very, very moisture driven. And you can see what I'm doing. I'm stretching the hair around the bend in the head. And I'm following it with the, with the brush. And with the hair dryer, like that. So look at my body, how I'm doing with my body. I'm basically shifting my weight on my leg, here. Constantly. So I'm, I'm wrapping the hair, and then I'm placing it into position, so it starts to set. And even though I've temporarily dried that, I leave it smooth while I start to work on the other hair. That was a great question, Ronell. Ideally, what I would say to you is understand, understand what the goal is. So in this scenario, the goal is moisture. So I need to make sure that the product that I'm using is very, very moisture driven. So again, if you look at the product that I've got behind me, I've got oil milk, Dago and Love Smooth. Those are the three key products I'm using on hair that is quite over processed. I've got an incredible colour by, by Evie and what I'll do is I'll get Harriet to explain to you the colour and please Harriet, you go through the formulation for me yep. while I continue blow drying for you guys, okay? So we've had a few guys asking about the colour so if I just bring you over here Sorry, the light's not great, so I'm going to have to read it out for you. So the hair was pre-licensed using mask bleach with 20 volume. The toner was then applied to the roots with 60 grams of 1023 plus 5 grams of 844 plus 2 grams of 556 with 5 volumes 1 to 2. The root, the ends we applied a slightly different colour just because the hair was so porous that we needed to bring that down a little bit darker. So Evie used 30 grams of 1023 plus 5 grams of 844 plus 2 grams of 556 with 5 volume 1 to 2. 
That was on for a good 20 minutes as the copper tones you tend to take a little bit longer to take to the hair. Afterwards we use finest pigments copper for five minutes after two shampoos. Rinse that out with conditioner and that's how we ended up with this beautiful copper tones. Thank you very much to Evie for all her work and colouring that. And then back to Johnny for the blow dry. What was the starting point when you saw the colour originally earlier? Yeah. What did you see? I mean, what was the starting position and what was it, why was the decision making to go down this particular colour process? Well, our model's hair tonight was already pre lightened. It had um, about a two centimetre regrowth. So we decided because it was already quite light, it would be a shame to take that back down to dark. So why not work with that lightness? Um, it had quite a yellowy tone to it. So instead of trying to lighten the hair up to a white, thus damaging the hair even more, we decided to work more with those warmer tones that are in the hair. Uh, Evie decided to go away from the yellow tones and work it more of a copper tone, which I think works beautifully with our lady's skin tone as well. And then we've had makeup by uh, Ursula as well. She works with a beautiful pink on the lip. Very nice, very complimentary. Definitely. And I was going to have some makeup, but then we decided not for me to have makeup. Never too late. <laughs> okay, so you can see that my hair dryer, I've got it on slow speed, but high heat. And the reason why I've got it on slow speed is because I don't want the shorter hair to start to poke up and stick out. So by working slow, I'm allowing the hair time to set and cool down. I'm not forcing the hair. I'm just allowing the air to circulate nicely. And what happens is, because I'm not forcing it with power, I'm not forcing all the short hair to stick up and become really aggressive. So Samuel Carpenter has asked how Samuel. come Yep, Samuel Carpenter. Hey, Samuel. Has asked how come you're using the nozzle when wrap drying and why the Denman brush and not the vest brush? What Big a, love. What a great question. Okay, so basically, uh, let me answer both questions one at a time. So a Denman brush, the reason why I'm using a Denman is because I, I want to try and avoid any kind of root lift because this type of texture, when you cut it down short, it tends to go spiky. Now the problem with the vest brush, is with a vest brush, because it's half of a round brush, you get a bit of a bevel in it. So what will tend to happen is when you wrap dry with that, you get a little bit of natural bounce to it. Now I want to try and avoid that really like a lot. So I'm using a Denman, um, I have to change my wording there. I'm using a Denman um, to basically get a much flatter finish on the hair. And I'm basically wrapping the hair down. And the reason why I'm using a nozzle is basically because again, I need directional setting. If I use without a nozzle, the airflow is much more sparse, which is what you would normally do on a, on a wrap dry. But in this scenario, because I want to manage all those little short hairs, this is basically helping me disguise the little short hairs. Whereas if I didn't have that, I'd have to work a massive distance with a lot more heat and a lot more speed. But I, you would definitely see a lot more of the little short bits sticking up. But what I'm going to do, is I'm going to use, you'll see in a minute when I start to cut hair again, I'm almost dry. Um, I'm going to use a lot more of a kind of freehand, kind of personalising techniques tonight on this particular shape, as well as a little bit of technical clean cutting, because I need to basically work with what's there. I can't ignore it and pretend it's not there. So last week, uh, my best friend, our business partner, Bedro, did a great session. Uh, thank you for asking questions, and thank you for your reviews. Very, very good. Please feel free, if you're watching this and enjoying this, please feel free to share it with your friends. If you press the share button on the bottom, bottom left-hand side of the screen, then your friends will be able to see this uh, as well and we can try and connect to as many people as we can and try and share to as many different audiences as we can. Can you see, look, can you see all these little short hairs? 
can you see them? Mm -hmm. Hopefully those guys can see them. I mean that they're running everywhere because of the um, the previous haircut. So what I need to do is I need to really manage them with my airflow and with my wrap dry. Okay, here you can see I need a bit more tension on the hair. So through this area here, I'm going to use a bit more of a tension dry. I'm just going to be careful not to lift the shorter hair underneath. So Jed from the Philippines. Hi Jed. Manila. I said Johnny it would be great to have you and the Alalon team again this year at Davenis Creative Style Academy. We're actually coming. We're going to be there in June. June. <laughs> in June myself, Madeline and Samuel will be coming over to the Philippines. So we will be there my friends. We will be in the academy, the Davenis Academy in the Philippines. Feel free to come and say hello. We're also doing quite a big hair show over there with Davenis. So I don't know if you've got tickets. If you haven't got tickets, feel free to get into contact with Davenis Philippines and they will arrange some tickets for you. I think the venue I think fits about 600 people I think. It's actually going to be a bigger, much bigger show than we did last year. Good, really good. So I'm focusing my airflow going down and I'm placing the hair into position to allow it to cool down exactly where I need it to be. And by tension drying like this, I can get really, really smooth cuticles. Now what you're going to find is when I start to put all my outlines in and start to really refine my internal shape, the whole haircut will come alive a lot more. Whereas for right now, what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to manage my texture and manage how the hair is sitting. So wrap dry till it's about 80% dry. And then tension dry and bevel the ends as much as you can. So when you wrap dry this sort of hair texture, would you mostly focus on wrap drying the roots first and then the ends after? Yeah, so the beauty to, the beauty to wrap drying is to basically make sure that the root is doing what you want to do. Because if the root is doing what you want, the ends will train themselves to do what you want them to do. Try not to worry too much about the ends to start off with. Try and focus mainly on the root and that will help you control your shape and help the hair sit into position. Good. So again, once you've heated the hair up, place it where you want it to sit and then let it cool down, move on. Never leave it messy. Good. Last bit, and then we're going to start to cut some hair. Okay. So, now I've got my blow dry in, what I'm going to do now, is I'm going to start to work all my mechanical shape internally. So I'm going to start in the back, okay? I'm very conscious of the fact that We've obviously got a crown on this side, so there's a lot of natural volume here. So I need to be mindful of the choice of length in this area, because this is my danger area. Now what I'm going to do, I'm going to pull the hair out, and I'm going to comb it so you can see. So Harry, if you go over there and face this way, you'll be able to see the existing shape that we have, and any hair that's missing. Okay? So if you comb the hair out, can you see how there's like so many shorter little panels in there? of different lengths that have been creatively cut by um, one of her friends. So what I'm going to do, tilt the head down for me, perfect, that way I can straighten my back. I'm going to comb the hair out and I'm going to put some kind of line into it. 
and I'm going to basically cut, you can see where it becomes very dense all of a sudden. So I'm going to cut a square cutting line like this, okay, the head's down, so that will be my square cutting line. That's going to sit over my shape, and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to pivot from that point, coming here out from the base. So now I come section one over to section two, and you can see even more so now. The, the zones that are missing. Can you see there? Can you see that piece that's missing? So even though I'm club cutting it now, in a minute I'm going to go through and I'm going to really, really point into the hair to make it softer, make it all connect through. I don't want to go too short. I'm going to be using a lot, a lot of personalising once I've ironed the hair through. And I'm basically working out from the base with a square cutting line, okay? I'm doing that all the way around. That's my one zone done. Now I'm going to do the same on this side. Okay. Good. So I've moved the hair around like that. So I can go from the long. Take the hair away. Try and be as clean as you can. Head down for me. Thank you. You calm the hair out. You've got a square cutting line. So Johnny, you said before you move the head position to compensate for your body position. Yes. What other tips can you give us to help as hairdressers? What other tips can you give us to help our backs? Okay. Who asked that question? That's a question from me. Oh, okay, cool. So basically, one of the things that you've got to imagine is if your back is bending, you're basically the head is in the wrong position. So what you need to try to do is manipulate the head so that your back can straighten as much as you can. Often what happens is, let's say you're working in one specific area, the idea is to move the head in the complete opposite direction, which tends to give you a bit of control in the shape, and tends to be able to straighten your spine. Good. Come it up. Take that hair away. Lift the head up to the side, brilliant. And, Tim, do me a favour, would you grab me a pair of irons, mate, please? Okay, can you see all these little short panels, guys? Can you see all these? So I need to be mindful of them, okay? I need to almost ignore them to begin with, so I'm not going to worry about them to begin with, and I'm going to work on that once it's dry. Good. Okay. So as I'm working, I'm working to the back of the ear. Look this side for me. Now this fringe, we want to keep the fringe quite long, don't we? Yeah, we want to keep the fringe quite long. So what we're going to do is I'm going to use a lot of over direction through the front to maintain as much length as I can behind the back. And I'm using, so my guard, number system is one, one to two, two to three, three to four, four to five, five to six, and then I'm gonna pull everything back to the same point, but I'm gonna stop just in front of the ear. So I'm not gonna disturb this length here. That's my last point, I'm elevating the hair, pulling it out from the base with a square cutting line, like this. Comb it once, Cut it once. Okay, now, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna iron the hair through, and I'm gonna put a bit more of a line in here, and then I'm gonna soften it out, as well as with the fringe. But what I'm gonna do before I do that is I wanna basically put a bit of oil, oil in the hair to moisturize the hair. So, Rosie Lewis. Is hey, that, Rosie. Why have you asked to chosen the, to cut the internal shape once you have dried it? Okay, so, basically, Rosie, in this scenario, there's lots and lots of little short panels that have been cut through the hair uh, randomly. So I'm in the situation where I need to be able to see what's happening. Now the, the problem I've got is when the hair is wet, the hair sticks to itself. So I can't actually see what's going on. So when the hair is dry, I'm able to see the hair that's falling out of my fingers. The hair will be able to separate better, much easier for me. So I can really identify what needs to happen. Whereas when the hair is wet, you 
can't see it because all the hairs kind of come, come together. I need to be able to understand what the hair is naturally doing from the previous shape. And the only way I can do that is by drying the hair through. The problem with cutting, there is negatives and positives to cutting dry hair. The negative of cutting dry hair is that basically uh, the hair tends to be quite sharp on the tips. Uh, so in this scenario, I'm going to iron the hair through, which will close the cuticle. But that means that when I cut it, the ends of the hair are going to be quite sharp. So I'm, I might need to iron it again after I've cut it. Now, the reason why I want to, to, to iron it through is because I need the hair, I need to close the cuticle a little bit to make it easier for me to see what's going on with my shape. So, comb the hair out. And I'm going to iron the hair and try and close that cuticle. Now you can see all the ends of the hair, there's all these little random little lengths in there. So, my mindset tonight is not one of trying to cut lots of lots of clean lines because there's no point. You cut sharp, put the shape in, try and get as much of a clean line as you can, but I know I'm gonna go through in a minute and I'm really gonna personalize this using pointing techniques and chipping techniques to help me loosen the shape up and try and make all those little random short lengths work. So when you're ironing the hair, iron it once slow and hot, place the hair into position every single time, every time. Why do we place the hair into position? Okay, so basically, um, by manipulating the hair with the heat, you're allowing us to basically seal the cuticle and allowing the hair to set into position. If you don't comb it into position after you've heated the hair up, the hair's not going to sit where you need it to sit. So what will happen is you won't have any control over how the hair is responding to you. Can you see all these little short panels running through the hair? Yeah, so I need to basically try and even them all out. So I need to do that by approaching the same way her friend cut it, but a bit more mechanical, a bit more of a system. Because you can see there's like holes missing from the shape. Now the other thing you could think about is, you can, choice of length, okay? So the choice of length is relative to the shape that you're creating. So if you're in a situation where you've got all these little shorter lengths, you could cut the hair down in those areas to match that shorter hair. But ideally, we want to keep a bit of length to our hair. We want it to feel quite soft. We don't want it to feel quite sharp. We don't want any clean lines. So what I'm trying to avoid doing is I'm trying to avoid cutting any clean lines, especially on the external shape because she doesn't want any sharp lines on it. So I'm going to use lots of pointing, lots of weave cutting, lots of slicing. These are some of the personalizing techniques I'm going to be using. Now you can see every time I run the iron through, I manipulate the ends a little bit with the iron. Can you see I get a slight bevel? And that way, when I start to cut it, it doesn't go spiky on me. Now the hair is disconnected ever so slightly in front of the ear. And the reason for that is I want to make sure I maintain that length in the front around her face because we don't want any kind of sharp and clean lines. So by keeping it longer, when I freehand the shape and use personalizing techniques, I can basically allow the hair to sit with an element of weight to it. Good. So when you're ironing the hair, always place the comb behind, behind the iron, okay? And always run it through and position the hair into shape, like this. And what this is doing is going to close all the cuticles for me. Now the oil oil acts like a sealant. So when you're, oil, when you're ironing hair that's got a bit of product on it, it enables you to basically get a nice closure on the outlines and on the tips of the hair. Whereas if you do it without, what's going to end up happening is that the shape will end up becoming static the more I start to work on it once it's dry. So, but if you seal the cuticle, 
enables you to really get that sheen that you want. Okay, just manipulate the tips. Place it into position and let it cool down. Okay, come around to this side. Good. Now ideally, what you want to try to do is only ever iron the hair maximum twice. Don't over, over iron it because what will happen is the hair will become extra static. I'm quite excited about cutting hair this week because last week, uh, unfortunately, I wasn't on um, and uh, my business partner Pedro did a beautiful haircut and for those of you who are watching and who are who follow every single week I'm sure you will agree it was a great haircut with a great shape so guys from tonic hairstyle says hi Johnny hey boys uh, when do you choose to cut your external or internal shape first oh, as Manos okay. from Manos okay so um, Manos how you doing my friend so basically in this scenario if I cut the external shape in first, which I did on the left, on the right hand side, that's going to instantly affect my choice of length within my internal shape. Now in this scenario, because I've got these random little lengths, I can't think so um, mechanically. I have to think a bit more free spirited. Even though I'm going to cut the shape with a technical approach, my cutting lines, the angle of my blade, all these things, are going to be designed to loosening the shape up and creating texture. So here for example, I don't want to put a sharp line into it and then go through and soften it. I want to soften the inside first and make sure the angle of my cutting line will be relevant to where I want the length on the external shape. So it depends what's priority. So if you want the inside shape to be the priority, then the angle of the cutting line internally will instantly affect the angle of the cutting line on the external shape and the amount of weight that we have. But you can see even here, look, you can see all those little random short bits. There isn't a, a question in this scenario of me worrying too much about a, a consistent distribution of weight because the weight is already quite irregular. So for me now, it's more about personalising the shape for it to work within the haircut. Ideally, one second, one second, just like that for me, just put it there for me, thank you. Um, ideally, what you wanna to try to do, if somebody's got a difficult area like a growth pattern around the hairline, what you wanna to try to do is put the hairline shape in first and then put the external, internal shape in after because you can adapt the cutting line. Look, look at that short, short little panel there, can you see where the hair's missing? So, in closure to your question, Manos, it depends what's a priority. If the priority is to manage growth patterns, then by working the external shape in first, you can help you change the angle of the cutting line internally to manage the weight externally. If the, the goal is to reduce the density internally, and the external shape isn't relative so much, then, one second for me. Then, uh, if you do the internal shape, the external shape can be adaptable depending on the angle of the cutting line on the internal shape. I hope that answers this question. It's a good question, Mano. Right. So, coming up to the last bit around the crown, and then we're gonna start to personalize the shape. So you can see it's got some kind of shape running through it now. But what I need to do is I need to loosen it up. Thank you. Okay, so now what we're gonna do is we're gonna create lots of texture, and lots of movement. Look in the mirror, look how dense that looks. It looks very, very bulky, very, very heavy. It doesn't have that sense of freedom to it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to basically reduce all of the weight through the hair. I'm going to take diagonal sections through the hair, okay? And I'm going to create texture. And how I'm going to do that, I'm going to ignore my mechanics underneath, okay? I'm going to comb the hair out. I'm going to use the tips of my scissors, which is why it's so important that the scissors are 
pointy and I'm going to reduce all those lengths. So I'm going to go about an inch away from the root and I'm going to weave cut the hair through and what that's going to do is going to collapse the shape and I'm basically going to make all these shorter panels more consistent through the haircut. So one, I'm going to do it close to the root, I'm going to lift it out again and this time I'm going to come halfway. So the first time I was right up close to the root, now the second time I'm about an inch away from the ends. So I've done there and then here. So what I'm trying to do is create shorter, ink, more consistent uh, areas of length. Now I'm going to work on the tips by using a pointing technique and I'm going to soften all of my cutting line so there's no density there. I'm still keeping the shape but I'm just stopping any density. So after when I style the hair, what's going to happen is the hair will sit with a, a bit of texture to it but it will all blend in and become more of an integrated shape. Now there's going to be some times where I'm pointing in quite deep and there's going to be some times where I'm pointing in just a tiny amount and the reason why that changes, in fact why don't I ask the audience if they can give me an idea or if they, if they can answer the question of why sometimes I'm pointing a lot more deeper and sometimes I'm just working the tips. That'd be quite an interesting little discussion to have. So that's going to create a bit of texture for me, you see? So I'm encouraging that texture. Horizontal sections. Come the hair out. I need to reduce the density. I want to keep my length, but I want to reduce density now. Because I'm on the side, I don't want the hair to stick up. So I'm actually going to put the blade on the scalp. So I'm going to go really, really tight. So my, my blade is actually on the scalp. So the hair that I'm cutting short is really, really tight to the scalp. Why have you cha changed your technique when working on the sides compared to the back? Okay, so basically, can you see I'm still taking away the same amount of density, but you can't see all those shorter panels. Then it wears here. Can you see here? Look, you can see the shorter panels. Yeah? Here you can't see them. Because what I've done is I've gone really tight to the root. So the hair is too short to go spiky on me. But what it does, it just reduces the density. But I've got lots of little weave cutting right at the root. And let me show you again. One second. Take the section. Comb the hair through. Lift the hair up. And what I'm not going to do is I'm not going to do the same thing on the hair that I've just done underneath. I'm going to leave that alone. So I'm going to come here. And look, if you look carefully, I'll go underneath you, I'll show you. I'm going right up into the root. And what that does, the short hair's underneath and the longer hair sits on top. And all that does is just reduce the weight, but you can't see any of that, any of that weave cutting. Now what I could do on this area here, just from the side profile, it, when I finish, if I feel it's still dense, I can use the slicing technique, but you're not getting all these little short little textures now because the hairs look visually looking much smoother. Now as I get to the top, I'm not going to avoid going near the root because I don't want any of that to stick up. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to stand behind, use the mirror and look at the silhouette. Thank you, Mr. You can see the silhouette. If you compare both sides, so right at the back. And this side is like a big puff ball, whereas that side now all of a sudden has just gone really, really flat. It's gone really, really flat through here, whereas this side's quite full. In fact, if you shoot over my shoulder a little bit and I get a black top, yeah, you'll be able to see the difference. This side's really bulbous and this side's much more collapsed. That's the goal of it, to collapse it, but still make it feel long. With the external. diffuse the line because we don't want any sharp lines on this haircut. She wants it to be quite soft. But I want it to be soft but I still want it to be like a, a consistently even density. Yeah, and it just softens that line. And now from a silhouette point of view I'm creating texture and movement around the back but I'm creating a much more flatter, smoother 
silhouette through the side. Good, come on the other side. So let me show you again. Through the back to behind the ear, I'm gonna do the weave cutting. I'm gonna go an inch from the root, an inch from the end, and then I'm gonna point the end. So if I come this way, good. I'm gonna come across. Thank you. Okay, I'm gonna elevate the hair, and again, I'm gonna go an inch from the root. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12. Okay, then I'm gonna comb the hair through, okay? Pick the same hair up again, and I'm gonna come an inch away from the, the end. And I'm gonna go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, 10, 11, 12. Now I have 13 here, just because this bit here is a bit more dense. So the question I asked before, I don't know if has anybody engaged in the question? Yep, got two answers. Come in. Who are they from, first uh, of all? So first one is from Samuel Carpenter. Okay, come on Samuel, give it to me mate. <laughs> Samuel says, pointing deeper because the area is more dense, less holy. Good. Uh, than some other areas. The area pointed deeper should fl sit flatter to the head. Mm. The first bit's correct. The second bit isn't necessarily correct uh, because if I go deeper, the hair goes shorter to the point where it actually could stick out more. So if anything, remember with this type of hair, this is Chinese hair. So at a certain length, the hair will either bend or stick up. So anything which is about an inch long will naturally stick up, okay? But I, I want that, I want to encourage that. And then Michaela. Hi Michaela. German friend Michaela. Yes. Uh, deep point to reduce more weight and heaviness, point cut to blend lines, e.g. lines due to colour. Good. Also, very good point. The colour obviously does help um, and can be uh, something you need to think about. But what I'm trying to do is the denser the hair, I know I've got holes, so like Samuel said before, I want to try and, can you see now that I've got this short panel that runs through the whole shape now, and it's consistent. I don't know if I'm pointing to that bit there, but you can see the consistency. So what I'm trying to do is the areas where I'm not going as deep are the areas where basically the hair is, has some, has some uh, density to it, but the areas where I'm going in deeper, the hair is obviously a lot thicker. So I'm reducing that weight and really thinning it out. So now look, you can see I've got almost like ridges of short cropped hair. So when I style it after, I'll have a consistent movement of weight within my haircut. I'm not worried about the outline yet. Now I get to the top, I'm gonna only work on the tips. So I'm not gonna weave cut the internal shape because I don't want any short hair running through the haircut. So I need to basically soften this. I'm going quite deep now because you can see I had that short bit in there from the last haircut. So I'm basically trying to remove the weight either side of that area. And you get this a lot when people come in, especially nowadays, a lot of people cut their own hair. Um, it's kind of a bit of a trendy thing, especially in London at the moment. So obviously when they want a, a, a good haircut, they come in and then we have to then adapt our techniques to make it match and uh, accommodate what's already there. Now in this scenario, I'm going quite deep because I really want to soften any, any overhang. I don't want any kind of weight sitting on that overhang. So I'm going in you know, half the blade, if not all the blade in different areas. Now, what will be the difference? This is a good question for the audience. What's the difference between doing it this way or using a thinning scissor? Because you could, use a thinning scissor here, couldn't you? So my question to the audience is, why am I not using a thinning scissor? What, what's the benefit in doing this particular technique with a regular pair of scissors? Let's see what the guys say. So again, I'm trying to soften all that. I don't want any weight to sit on that shape. I'm doing a lot of work when it's dry and the reason why I'm doing a lot of work on it once dry is because I'm able to see where the problems are. So Ronel has answered. Okay, hi Ronel, give it to me. So this is where you have more control. Okay, so with a, very good, with a thinning scissor, obviously when you pull the hair out, you take out consistent even amount of weight. 
but on, an, on a, a haircut where there's already hair missing, so if I take a horizontal section for example, okay, and I comb the hair out, and there's an area where the hair is missing, then I don't want to weave cut, I don't want to thin that bit out some more. So I want to change the weight either side of that area. So by using my scissor, I'm able to basically be, cut a bit there, right, no, none there. Cut a bit there, okay, none there. Cut a bit there, none there. Whereas with a, with a thinning scissor, you tend to take away a consistent amount throughout. Whereas if you've got an area that's already got holes in it, you don't want to take out more weight because you're just encouraging that hole. Now I'm just going to use the mirror to look at the side profile to make sure I'm happy with the texture there. I like that texture. It's kind of trying to make it more even in regards to the movement. Yeah, can you see now when it moves, you can see it all kind of moves in unison. It's like, it's going to like that, it kind of moves like that together. Whereas before, when I moved it, it was like clumps of weight that wasn't sitting anywhere. Now I've got to reduce the density here, as you can see in the mirror. I've got to make the profile much smoother and flatter. Whereas that side's got that movement to it, this side's very clumpy and heavy. Okay? So I'm going to go back to my weed cutting again. But I'm going to go again, I'm going to go nice and tight up to the root. So comb the hair out. I'm going to leave the excess hair out on the bottom. That way I don't get any more holes. Can you see, look? Look here, guys. Can you see where there's like a hole? I don't know if you can see that hole missing from there. If I use a thinning scissor, I'm going to not just take away the weight here, I'm going to take out whatever's left here. And I'm going to like in encourage that to become even more of a hole. So like now, what I'm able to do is I'm able to go to the root in the area where the, where the hair's dense. And then I, I don't carry on past this point because there's no hair here. Yeah? And I'm only actually reducing the weight in that one area. Which is why you should, realistically, when it comes to cutting hair, all you should need is one pair of scissors. This one hair, this one pair of scissors here should be able to do everything. One scissors and one comb, that's all you need. Anything else is, I mean, it's, they're fantastic tools and in some scenarios it's really valuable, but you don't really need a thousand scissors and a thousand combs. You just need two or three combs based on the textures that you work with, i.e. a wide tooth comb and a tight comb, and you just need a really good pair of scissors. So when you cut it once, you haven't got to worry about it. Go right up to the root. And what that does, it just collapses the whole shape through for me. Makes it much more slimmer, slimmer feeling. And you don't get any spikiness to it. Good. Same here. And I can afford, because I'm not going past the roundness of the head, I can afford to go in quite, quite tight. Once I go round, round the, 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 the bend, bend in the head, then I wouldn't go this high up into the root. Again, can you see it doesn't look like there's anything there now? But when you comb it through, you reduce the weight by 50, 60%. Okay, now this top bit, I'm not gonna point into any of that um, in regards to my weave cutting. Again, I'm gonna comb the hair down and I'm gonna establish my external shape. So comb the hair down. Establish my external shape. Get it clean to start off with, just so that it's consistent and even. Okay. And then, comb the hair up. Just reduce all the density on that line. Just so it moves nice and soft. Comb it through, look at it again. That doesn't need any more, that needs it there. So be selective. So I just want to say thank you um, to everybody who joins in. I know every week we've got like a, um, our regulars that join in every single week. And I want to thank you for giving up your time and for watching us. Uh, and also for those of you who, who share it with their friends, I want to say thank you because what that does is it helps us access people and share with people who may not know about 
what we do, how we do it. So thank you very much, I really appreciate it. Okay, now with this length here, okay, um, I need to put some shape in there. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do something which I'm going to find quite interesting actually. So I'm going to start by um, using the fringe as a guide, okay. So my fringe length, I want to keep all my length in the fringe. So I'm going to take a section from the crown to the front forehead. If you want to come on the other side, Harry. Like that. Come with me. I'm going to comb the hair up. I'm going to use the fringe length, which is, you can see the fringe is consistent all the way through to that point. All that sits in the fringe, yeah? So I'm going to use my longest point of my fringe. Let me take that section again. Now the negative to working on dry hair is that unless you work clean, the hair becomes much more glide, kind of glides through your fingers. So you need to be, have much more tension. So now I'm going to comb the hair straight up. I'm going to use my fringe length as my guide. And I'm going to remove the weight internally. I'm going to use the crown as my guide. Okay, that's section one. Now I'm going to put everything up to section one. So Harry, if you come behind my shoulder this side. I'm going to take sections from the back to the front, put my finger where section one starts, comb it onto my finger, and then comb it up. And what that's going to do, is going to reduce the amount of density that's sitting on the outline. Yeah, and again, with a nice sharp pair of scissors, you comb it once, no matter how dense the hair is, it's gone. Okay, and again, I take a horizontal section, okay, place my comb underneath, place my finger on the point where the parting is, and then comb it up onto my finger, and then comb it straight up. Good. Now I'm keeping the disconnection behind the ear. You can see I've got a really obvious disconnection there. By combing it up and connecting it through the top, I'm creating a triangular vertical shape this way. So I'm maintaining my weight on the exterior shape, but I'm also loosening some of the density in the hair. Okay, I'll do the same on the other side. And what that does, it creates more movement to my haircut. And then in a minute, I'm gonna go through and point through it to make it even lighter. So again, I'm gonna take section one through the top Remove all the other hair out of the way. I'm going to take a section from the back to the front. Let the hair drop away. Make sure it's clean. Comb the hair straight up. Find my guide. And then cut it once. Now ideally what you want to try to do is comb the hair once and then cut it once. Again, take a horizontal section place your comb, place your finger where the parting is, and then combing up onto your finger. And keep a nice bit of control, nice bit of tension. Good. Just got very, very, very strong hair. Really, really strong hair. So you need to really be able to manage that movement and manage that texture really well. Okay, now I'm going to come through my shape and I'm going to point into all of the length so that way all of the ends of the hair are soft. I don't want any, any sharp lines or any clean lines on the haircut. So I'm really, really going to go quite deep and I'm going to have to soften that completely through. I don't want there to be any strength there. That way when you, I put texture, I put product in the minute, I can get a really nice texture out of the hair. Comb the hair up. You can see obviously where I cut my clean line, okay? And I wanna basically, can you see how it's so thin underneath everywhere else on the tips? So I'm gonna try and make it as even as possible. So by using this technique, this quite deep point cutting, I'm not touching that weight, I'm not touching that weight, but I'm reducing the weight in between, yeah? And again, and I'll do it the whole way through. Okay, so there's my cutting line. 
You can see where it's weaker here. Yeah? I'm going to come quite deep to reduce the density. And again, now, comb it through because the hair that you've just taken away is still there. So now I can see, look, that's heavy and that's heavy. So I don't point anywhere else apart from the heavy areas, which is the benefit to using this scissor rather than a thinning scissor. And what that's doing is just creating that soft movement for me. So Clinton Norris. Hey Clinton. Has asked what would be the what would be the difference in the end result if you took a section vertically, horizontally or diagonally when point cutting? Good question. Very good question. Okay, so ideally in this scenario, I want to see the weight in the centre and the weight on the external shape. So by taking a section from the top to the bottom and combing the hair up, I'm able to see my two danger areas, which are my weakest areas, and I'm able to see the density inside. So now, I'm able to really be able to, can you see, look at the density there, it's thinner. It's there, it's thinner, but you've got that big density area in the middle. So by working this way, I'm able to see my two danger areas and then be able to visually, if I turn it towards the camera better, you'll be able to see, the, uh, this doesn't need to be pointed, this bit here, just here. That doesn't need to be pointed there. Now if I took a section this way, so from back to front this way, I wouldn't be able to see my two danger areas on top and bottom. So that's the reason why. I could take a diagonal section um, like this, and the reason why a diagonal could work is because I'm seeing a cross section of hair. See, look, look at the density here, look at that hole there. Look at the density there. So I point into the dense areas, make it consistent, and then come over here. Point into the dense area, make it consistent. Okay? What I'm aiming for now, I don't normally cut hair like this. I normally work a lot more clean lines. So for me, it's quite fun having a bit of a challenge in regards to working a bit more free-handed. But ideally, what I don't want what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to make the shape a bit more consistent. Okay, now, I'm going to start to use slicing and pointing to reduce density where, where I don't like it. So now, I'm going to use a slicing technique to reduce the weight. So I'm cutting little shorter panels through the hair. That way it's making this really weak. And I'm coming around this side. I'm doing the same thing here. And what this is doing is in creating a little more texture and a little more of a raw finish on the haircut. Now notice, can you see I'm getting chunky bits? That's because my blade is like this. If I turn it like this, then you won't really see those little chunky bits, but I want it to be quite raw in texture, hence why I'm working with my blade parallel to the hair. There you go. Calm the hair up. And again, just slice the hair through. And I'm going to tuck the hair behind the ear. Make sure I don't get any little long bits. And then I'm going to turn my attention to the fringe. So I tuck the hair behind the ear. Always check to see what's going on in this area here. So make sure there's no little longer bits. Okay, other side. Come the hair down. Make sure I connect that through. Good. Now, I'm going to talk about the front area now, which is the fringe area of the previous haircut. So here, what I want to do is I want to reduce the density in the fringe area because that's quite bulky. So I'm going to comb the hair out. And we're not going to change the length. I'm just going to basically reduce all the density to it. 
so it's more softer. I don't want there to be any sharp lines. And every single time, I'm going in quite deep. That way, that movement in the front is consistent. What I could do is I could do this, watch. If you take a horizontal section, oh, sorry, diagonal section, come here through. And then watch, I'm going to point into the root like that. And what that's going to do, it's going to take away all the density. But I'm going to start to see a little bit of texture now because I'm, I'm pointing on top of the length. And again, come my head down. And I'm going to point all the way through, like that. And that's going to basically reduce all my lengths and take away a bit more density. So in a minute, I'm going to put some product in the hair and I'm going to... I'm going to style the hair with some product. Just put your thumb there. Just put your finger there. That's what you're going to get. Perfect. Keep it there. Thank you. Good. And you can see I'm getting a few, a few shorter panels in there. And that will help me encourage the texture later on. So even though I'm working a lot freehand, I'm trying not to create too much so I'm not going to point there actually because I don't want any spiky bits on top. Good. Do the same on this side. So I'm coming up towards the end of my haircut now. I'm just personalising it with little, little points. Notice that points of learning with this haircut is to understand when we've cut in the distance from the root and how that affects. Uh, in the back I worked inch from the root, inch from the middle, inch from the ends, and then pointing into the ends. On the sides, I spent a lot of the time weave cutting the shape through. And then I've used slicing, as well as chipping like this, to basically create little bits of length and little kind of choppy bits. I'm not scared to be um, work very visually, so again, going right up close to that root, and I'm being consistent in my approach. Okay, now that's where the roundness of the head is. So now I don't want to go any higher than that doing that, because if I go higher than that, you're going to see with the short bits. Okay, now I need to look at my balance. So if you look in the mirror, you can see that the balance is shorter on this side than it is this side. Can you see that? Okay, so what I need to do is I need to rebalance the outline and then again soften it through and then I'm going to style it. So let me show you how to check your balance. You come around here for me. Okay, so when you comb the hair down, what you do is you rest your comb on the tip of where the hair is and then you rotate your comb through to the front. And I can see my comb sits right on the tip of the lip. Okay. So I'm going to come to the other side. Okay. And I'm going to look at my shape. And I'm going to go from the tip of the lip there. I'm going to rotate like that. And I'm going to see what needs to come off. So I'm using that point there as my reference to my balance. Also, another thing I have to think about is on this side, I've kept this little bit of length behind the ear. So you can see that from the front profile. Whereas on the other side, you haven't got that. Because my shape's more fluid and more consistent and round. Because obviously my back's asymmetric. Yeah? So I'm going to just tilt your head to the side. I'm just going to reduce a little bit of the weight on the tips. Just to make the outline a little bit more softer. And I'm almost kind of drawing that outline in. Just like that. So I close my blade as I go in. So as I go in, I close the blade like that. Good. Okay, so I'm going to ask the audience 
For those of you out there who use Davenus product, um, I want to ask for some suggestions from you guys. I want the hair to feel quite moisturised. I don't mind it feeling a bit wet looking, but at the same time I don't want it to be gooey. So I don't want to use a product which is going to make the hair feel clunky and gooey. So I don't really like the idea of using wax. Um, I prefer the idea of using some kind of cream or maybe some kind of oil and some kind of hairspray and some kind of dust. So what kind of products would you recommend for me to use? That's better. That's better. Good. So I'm coming to the end of my shape now. I'm now, what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna keep moving the hair around and looking at areas that I feel maybe is a bit too dense. I'm just gonna reduce the weight a little bit just so the shape kind of moves nicer. Now I love the fact that you've got all these little shorter panels running through the haircut now, but now, it's done with a, an execution of a, a, a purpose, whereas before it was just holes throughout the shape. So again, I move the hair around, I look at the shape, okay? And all I'm gonna do before I style the hair, I'm just gonna very slightly iron the tips of the hair. Because I've, ironed, because I've cut it dry, the ends got quite spiky. So by putting a little bit of heat on it, I can just seal the ends of the hair and get it doing what I want it to do. I'm not trying to get too much of a bevel, but I'm going to get a little bit of a bevel. Have they got any, any suggestions product wise? Yep, we have um, Elena's uh, dust. Dust, okay. Ronald said, would hair assistant definition mist be enough? Okay, good idea. And that's what we've got so far. Okay. But I think I'm going to use a little bit of the, the dust. I'm going to use some oil, oil for the shine. And I'm going to use maybe some, um, maybe some hair paste. That'd be quite nice. Kelly Meach said oil, oil and dry texturizer spray. Yeah, that'd be quite nice. I could use sea salt. I could use the salt product. I think what I want is I want it to feel not gooey, but I do want there to be a little bit of moisture in there. So if I use the paste, that will give me a little bit of kind of, a little bit of, of, of gunk, a little bit of something in there. Um, but I'm gonna start, I'm gonna start with the least gunky product and build it up based on what I need. So I'm gonna start with the oil oil. And I'm gonna work that through the hair really, really well. And now what you're going to be able to see is the haircut's going to move really nicely. Okay? And all those little short panels now are going to start to come, come alive. The sheen on the hair will start to come alive as well. Good. Okay, and then we're going to use a little bit of the dust just so it feels a little bit dirty. great little distributor and what you do is just put it in just at the root mainly at the crown that way the little short bits little short bits stand up don't be scared to use it I'm not going to try and avoid the lengths in the front because I don't want the lengths in the front to have any texture to it. Okay, and then I'm going to use a little bit of the style of paste. Okay, so I'm going to use a medium hole paste. Okay, I'm going to use a little bit of that, nothing too much. Work it into my hands. And just really work, it into the, work the product into the hair. Style the hair. Okay. Style the hair exactly how you want it to look. Good. I like the idea of the hair being quite sweepy in the front. If you look in the mirror at Harry. How's it? You'll be able to see I can pull the pull the fringe through. Because I've I've softened the fringe, it does what I want it to do. 
I like the idea of it being quite sculpted in the back. So by using the paste, by using the dust, I can create some texture and let those shorter hairs come out. By taking that away there, I slim, it, I slim the shape down visually a lot more as well. So don't be scared to texturize it. I love that because all the disconnection, you can't really see the, it looks like one haircut even though you've got two or three different shapes there. And the paste, what it does is it controls all the texture. Okay. So it looks like a, quite a classic type shape, but actually if we, we, we all know that it's anything but classic as a haircut. And I think what you're going to see as I take this off, as I stamp her up, and take a gown off, you're going to see that it goes with her look, her overall look as style as a person. Just to give the hair some shine. I've heard a few people interested in the My Hair Assistant dust. Okay. Asking if you've put the dust into a neck brush. Okay, good question. So basically this is, let me show you what this is. So this basically uh, has a lid, okay? And what it is, um, the, you basically pull it down, put the lid on and push it in. And then this unscrews, I've got oil on my hand now, but this unscrews and the dust goes in here. And then when you take that off, you can see the dust comes through. Yeah. So pull up. So it comes um, when you buy the dust, and what you do is you can put that in in areas where you want a bit of scruffy texture. I don't want this to be over styled. Do this and this, and you'll be able to see. Would you mind standing up for me? Yeah. Perfect. If you can just do me a favour and just do a 360 towards the camera. Okay, you can see this is a, a haircut, turn around for me, which has basically been cut shorter in the back using um, a chipping technique on the underneath to control the texture and try and rebalance all the length internally by using weave cutting and pointing so you get lots of different movement. Or if you want, what you can do, you can start the hair by combing it down and it will blend into the shape on the bottom. So it depends what you want it to look like. Ideally, I don't mind a little bit of texture and all those shorter little lengths give me that movement. But by keeping this quite clean, it always looks very defined as a haircut. I hope you like my haircut. I hope you like my shape. Okay, I want to say thank you very much. If you've got any last minute questions, feel free to write to Harriet. So to be very clear, I used wee cutting, I used pointing, I used sli slicing, and I used chipping to create this technique, to create this shape. So I didn't necessarily work as any club cutting lines. I only did that a little bit on the outline. The majority of the haircut was cut very visually, with lots and lots of freedom, so the haircut moves, and every time you dress it, it will look and feel a little bit different. So. Any questions? No. Good. Big Cow says that his mum thinks you're a wizard. <laughs> <laughs> I'm fat as a wizard. I've not got a beard like a wizard, but I ain't got any hair here. <laughs> Thank you very much, and we'll see you next week. Thank you so much. Bye, <laughs>